And it was like a massive ball, the diameter of which can be the height of this house from the tiling to the ceiling. And there were people all around the ball, some at the top of the ball, some at the base, some around various parts. And the question was being asked, various people, what do you think of this ball? What is the color of this ball? And some to one side will say, oh, it is white. And some to another side, oh, we say it's blue. And some to the other side, we say, oh, it is red. And that could have generated a controversy and um, contentions and arguments. But then the Spirit of the Lord made me to realize that each of those various people was right. Every one of them was right from the perspective of God they comprehend. And he made me to realize that that ball was like the revelation of his son to various people in various places at various times. 
And he also made me to realize that it will take not just an individual revelation of the Lord, but also a communion of the saints, a coming together of the saints, the corporate body of Christ, to be able to comprehend in the language of Paul to the Ephesians, the length, the width, the depth, the height of the love of God that passes human understanding, that we may come into the fullness of God. So we need to receive the revelation he contacts, and the revelation she contacts, and the revelation you contact, and share the same with one another to be able to comprehend the fullness of God. So you will see, coming back to the question, who is Christ? You see various people in scripture having various things to say by the inspiration of the same Holy Spirit as to who Christ is. And for some, Jesus, and we addressed that in the first service, for some, Jesus is the Son of God. And it should not just be a revelation some comprehend, all should come to an understanding that Jesus is the Son of God. And also for some, Jesus presented himself to all who hear him in the context of scripture to his disciples. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And we address those two revelations of who Christ is in the first service. But I'd like to take things a little bit further here. Who is Christ? To you, who is Christ? To you, who is Christ? To you watching these on live streaming on the various platforms, who is Christ? And some other things I'd like us to understand about Jesus Christ here this morning is that Christ is the Savior of the world. And Jesus himself offered himself from that posture that you will see in Luke chapter 19 when Zacchaeus, this was a wealthy man, an affluent man, but in short of stature, but he would not allow his wealth to deprive him of greater encounters. He will not uh, uh, allow his social esteem and social advantage to deprive him of what his social status and his wealth could not give to him. He was a wealthy man. He was an affluent man. He was a famous man. But he lacked some things and he figured out that a revelation of Jesus as the Christ could bring those dimensions to him. So he ran ahead of the crowd, knowing that he had the disadvantage of height. He ran on top of a sycamore tree and hung up. A, can you imagine a millionaire? Can you imagine a billionaire hanging in the midst of a crowd in the branches of a tree? But he will not allow anything that he had. He will not allow the opinions of people to deprive him of an encounter with the Lord. So he hung up on the branch of the tree, a branch of the tree. And when Jesus was passing by, he looked up at that point. And a wealthy man had an encounter with destiny. And Jesus looked to him and said, come down, Zacchaeus. Today, I'm going to dine with you in your house but let's see this quickly and when he got to Zacchaeus house Zacchaeus did several things but look at the response of Jesus here to this man who needed something superior to wealth something superior to fame something superior to social status and social standing and Jesus spoke here in Luke chapter 19 from verse 9 to verse 10 are you there in Luke chapter 19 hello friends I hope you're not waiting for the projector or the tv screens you have your bibles with you lift up your bible and say this is my bible lift up your bible and say this is my bible it is not borrowed it is not a case of alas it is borrowed this one is not borrowed luke chapter 19 from verse 9 to verse 10 and jesus said to him today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham, not by biological ties, but by revelation that produces faith. For this one is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus from this um, um, passage presented himself as the savior of the world the one who is able to save humanity from sin from shame from eternal gift uh, guilt eternal damnation and eternal perdition but not just jesus 
as savior of the world? Who is Christ? Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 3 brings us another dimension. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 3. I'm reading from the cla um, classic amplified translation of the Bible. Classic amplified translation. In many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, just like I started to share with us, various people seen a mighty ball, some saying this is red, some saying this is white, some saying this is blue. And God saying, you are all right depending on your perspective and the dimension of revelation you contact. So now you see the writer, the author of the letter to the Hebrew Christians in saying here, in many separate revelations, different people contacting different things at different times, in different ways, from the same God, in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth. And in different ways, God spoke of old to our forefathers, in and by the prophets but in the last in the last of these days he has spoken to us in the person of a son whom he appointed here and lawful owner of all things also by and through whom he created the worlds and riches and the riches of space or the expanse of space and the ages of time he made produced built operated and arranged them in order he is the sole expression take note of that he is the sole expression and the, the, the king james the new king james talks about the image one time one says the outshining of god's radiance here he says he is the soul singular in the first service the new one sang a powerful song they sang about god as the sole definition our god is the sole definition of a god and so you see here, the, the Bible corroborating that Jesus is the soul, the soul, the soul expression of the glory of God, the light being, and the outrain or outshining or radiance of the divine. And he's the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, unfolding, maintaining, and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power when he had of i mean when he had by offering himself accomplished our cleansing of sins and redance of guilt he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high so we establish to us here that this jesus the christ is the accurate and sole expression or sole representation of God. Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, is the sole expression, the sole representation, the sole image of the living God. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 15 to verse 16, quickly. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 15 to verse 16. He that is Christ here, he said he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. So we're establishing to us here from this passage, especially in Hebrews chapter 1, that Jesus is the sole representation of God to all men. The so politicians want to encounter God, housewives want to encounter God, artisans want to encounter God, people working in the oil sector, people working in the finance sector, people working in the building sector, people into road construction, people who are into marine business, all walks of life, all categories of people, and students and scholars, research fellows, lecturers, teachers, medical gurus, legal practitioners, all who want to encounter God can come to a revelation of God through his soul representation, his express image. He's the sole expression of God in the person of Jesus. So we established to us here this morning that Christ is the sole expression of our God. Jesus Christ 
is the accurate you want to understand the standards of god you want to understand the measure of god you want to comprehend who god is what god is about what god is life if you comprehend jesus you comprehend the father and it took a long while it took about three years of his disciples walking with him the training apostles walking with him and it came to the point in in john and chapter 14 he started to tell them about the father and how he was going to the father and how he himself is the way and the truth and the life and then thomas the doubter went on to say if you reveal the father to us he said that will be sufficient for us and then he looked at thomas and he said you mean you've been with me all this while walk with me all this while and you don't know the father You've seen me, you've seen him. And so I challenge every one of us here this morning. I challenge all of us on live streaming. If you want to comprehend God, you want to understand God, comprehend his son Jesus. Jesus the Christ is the soul and the accurate and the excellent and the express representation of our God. Let me give us one more here this morning. Who is Christ? Who is the Christ? Who is the Messiah? He is the Lord. Lord is master. Lord means the one who is in charge. Lord means the controller, the one who has the final say, the one who has the final decision, the one who determines the final direction of all things. Jesus is the Lord and the Father set him so. He paid the price. He was in the class of God. You read in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Though in the class of God, he did not count it wrong. It's something to be struggled for, to be contend, contended for. He made himself of no reputation. He took up the form of a servant. He took up the form of a born servant. But you know what? Because he paid the price, humbled himself, humbled himself unto death. Let's read now Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9. What, what the father did consequently because of what Jesus did with his earthly life in taking on the will of the father in putting on himself the standards of God the will of God the measure of God on himself look at Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9 we we'll read on to verse 11 therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father so we are establishing to us here Jesus the Christ is also the Lord and see in this dimension many people especially Christians have a continual struggle we want him to be the savior to save us from sin to save us from shame to save us from eternal damnation eternal perdition we want him to save us from our enemies and he has the capacity for all this and he has paid the price for all this to be savior but you see jesus does not just want us to carry the revelation of him as savior he wants us also to carry the revelation of him as Lord. And many of us struggle in this regard. We are eager to surrender to him as Savior. Save me from my sin. Save me from my past. And save me from shame. Save me from eternal separation from God. But then you see, after he saves, he wants to be Lord. He wants to be in charge of our lives. He wants to be in charge of our thoughts. So he gave us the word of God to renew our minds so that we no longer think like the people of the world, like people who don't know God, like people who have never seen God, like people who have never encountered the accurate representation of God. He wants to be able to bring direction to our thoughts. He wants to be able to control our thinking. He said, don't be conformed to this world. He said to the Roman, I mean to Paul, to Paul, to the Roman Christians, don't be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is unveiled in Christ. So the question as I get on here this morning is, yes, he is son of God to you. Yes, he is savior to you. Yes, he is the way and the truth and the life to you. But also, he wants to be Lord. 
He wants to be in charge of your life. He wants to be in charge of our thoughts. He wants to be in charge of our time. He wants to be in charge of our decision-making process. He wants to be in charge of every expression of our lives, our finances, our marriages, our relationships. That is why the Word of God is replete in inf to influence every area of our lives. Worshiping God, embracing Jesus, is not just for issues of religion. It's not just for issues when we come to church Sunday morning. But after you leave church and you are back in your marriage, you leave church and you are on the highway, you leave church and you are in the midst of strangers who seem to be on a so lower social level. The Word of God wants to bring control. The Word of God wants to bring boundaries. The Word of God wants to renew our minds on the way we relate to people, the way we relate to money, the way we relate to fame, the way we relate to power, the way we relate to spiritual authorities, that we honor them, we respect them, but that we don't deify them. So Jesus is the Lord. The question is to be asked here this morning, is he Lord over your life? Is Jesus Lord over your time? Is Jesus Lord over the priorities of your life? Can you say he's in control? Can you say he has the final say? Can you say you, you live your life at his bidding? Can he change your plans? Can he change your priorities? Can you say, but this is the way I want to spend my money. I work hard for it. And now the spirit of the Lord comes and says, no, but this is the way the Lord will rather have you prioritize the money you work for. Jesus is the Lord. And if we are going to walk in the fullness of these things, Jesus as Son of God, Jesus as the accurate representation of our God, Jesus as Savior, Jesus as Lord, all these revelations of the Lord, all these expressions of who he is, place a demand on our life. A demand for corresponding action. A demand to live by revelation. A demand to come out of the old life, to come out of the old thoughts, to come out of the old relationships that negate the finished works of Jesus in our lives. Jesus paid the price, did all these things for us, became Savior, becomes Lord, becomes the way, the truth, and the life that gives us access to the Father, that we also may become sons and daughters of the Most High. Jesus paid the price. Jesus did it all so that we live like him. It may please you to know that when Jesus came on us, he put on the nature of the Father. He lived in holiness. God is holy. He lived in righteousness. The throne of God is a throne of righteousness. He embraced grace. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Until that grace came upon him, he never made the effort to, um, to, to, to do the will of God. He never made the effort to represent God. So Jesus represented God by grace. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 9 to verse 10 that Jesus, by the grace of God, tasted death for every man. So Jesus came on earth represented God, put on God as an example to everyone who receives Jesus, that we also may represent Jesus. And how do we represent him? By putting on, taking on Jesus Christ. And so you see, when you begin to take this responsibility, your life will shift from religion to divine reality. When you begin to take the responsibility that, look, listen, I'm an engineer, but I've taken on Christ. I'm a businessman, but now I'm taking on Christ. Your life will shift from religion that has a form of godliness, but denies and deprives of the power of godliness. There will be a shift in your life. No wonder the Bible challenges us from place to place. Come out of them. Come out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a peculiar people. You are a chosen generation. You have been called out of darkness to show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, what fellowship has light with darkness? What fellowship, what conquer has Belial with the sons of God? Come out from amongst them and be separate. So the life of Christ is a different life. A life that will represent Christ is a life that takes on Christ. And I like to say this as I begin to round this up this morning. A 
a practical expression of how everyone in every field, the politician can represent Jesus if he will take on Jesus. The businesswoman, accomplished businesswoman, famous businesswoman can represent Jesus accurately, efficiently, excellently if she will put on Jesus. Zacchaeus was accomplished, friends, accomplished on the job, accomplished with social might, accomplished with financial might, financial means, yet he recognized there is something my money cannot get. There is something my, my life cannot get. There is something my status in the society cannot get that this Jesus stands to offer me. So he paid the price. He went the extra mile. He climbed on a tree. He forgot about status. He forgot about money. He forgot about his robe. That he may lay hold on what Jesus could offer him. What am I saying to us here this morning? Zacchaeus sought something. He got it. No matter who you are, no matter your field, you can represent Jesus there if you put on Jesus. If you put on Christ. Like I said, a practical expression of that is to look at the lives of actors and actresses. Some of these actors and actresses, they go through severe measures to be able to take up the roles of the personalities they want to portray in the film. Some are portrayed gangster don't. I mean, gangs, um, portray the role of gangsters. Some are portrayed the role of prisoners. Some have portrayed the role of the mighty. Some have portrayed the role of people who went on self-starvation. Some have portrayed the role of living in acute climatic conditions like in the Arctic region. And because of that, these people, I was reading about a lady in the course of the night, and this lady, just to take up the form, just to put on the persona, the character of the person, the role she wanted to act, she did nipple piercing. She did actual tattoos. She shaved her eye, eye um, brows. She, 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 she stripped her hair, her hair of her natural hair. She disfigured herself, practically speaking, just because she wanted to act a role. I read of a lady by the name of Demi Moore. She wanted to, she, in acting G.I. Jane, she had to be subjected to the rigorous training of the American Navy SEAL. It's a special elite unit of the American Armed Forces. They go through rigorous, life-changing, psychologically changing, emotionally distressing training. And this lady, not so young anymore at that time, was willing to... She said, she used, quoting her, she said, I could easily have used one of the stunts women to carry out these roles. But he said, I wanted to feel what these people go through. So she went through pain. She went through emotional trauma. She was psychologically affected for a long period of time to put on a role in a film of maybe one hour or one hour 20 minutes. Some of these people become recognized. They receive Oscar awards. They receive what you call Academy Awards. They become worldwide celebrity. But you know as a Christian, you are also called into a role. Unlike a one and a half hour role that may take one and a half years to prepare for, this is a lifelong role. Christianity is not a Sunday role. Christianity is not a church service role. Christianity is a lifelong, lifetime role. Public role, public persona, private persona in your thoughts when no one can figure out your thoughts. The one who has called us, the one who has set the standards, the one who wants us to represent him, is calling us to a lifelong role. And so if Jesus will really be son of God to us, if Jesus will really be savior to us, if Jesus will really be the way, the truth, the life, if Jesus will really be Lord, we need to put on the Christ. If I may ask the question, have you really put on Jesus? Some of these people I was saying in the first service, the things they subject themselves to, 
just for a one and a half film, two hours, three hours at the most. It takes them up to one year to recover. That is, Bolande decides to act as Tunji. So, subjects herself to the punishing demands of looking like Tunji, shouting like Tunji, screaming like Tunji, looking like Tunji, talking like Tunji. But after Tunji, role is over. It takes Bolanle one and a half years to recover Bolanle. Now my question to you as an engineer, as a, a politician, as a captain of industry, as a student, as a scholar, are you really a Christian? Have you put on Jesus? Because this role is for life. It's not for a moment. It's not for transient recognition of men. It's not for pastor to notice you. It is for the eternal God who has given us a lifetime in order to give us eternal rewards to see that we act the role efficiently and excellently. Put on Christ. You see this true scripture. I'll read a few of that this morning. Christian, put on Christ. Christian, put on Christ. Christian engineer, put on Christ. Christian doctor, put on Christ. Christian housewife, put on Christ. Christian trader, put on Christ. Not for the moments when people label you Christian, but for all the times you know that God is watching. This is where many of us struggle. Putting on Christ. Romans chapter 13. It's a lifetime role. It's a lifelong role. It's a lifetime script. It's a lifelong taking on of a role of another. The world is watching. The sinners are watching. I shared in the first service how different people testified about Jesus. The Roman centurion said, surely this is the son of God. Mark said, I bring to you the gospel. Mark chapter 1 verse 1. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. John the Baptist said, I did not know him, but the one who sent me also told me, upon whosoever you see the Spirit descending and remaining, the same is he who baptizes in the Spirit. And now I come and I testify that this is the Son of God. God the Father testified. Multitudes testified. Even demons. Mark chapter 1, you read in one of those, um, from verse, um, chapter 3, I mean, from verse um, 15 to verse 16 to verse 17. Even demons, when he started driving them out of people, possessed people, sickness rooted in demons, infirmities rooted in demons, barrenness rooted in demons, even the unclean spirit said, we know who you are. You are the son of the living. So various people testified and also various people are watching us we say we are Christians we have the labels we wear the armbands we carry the bags our stickers of our cars our king stickers of our kidnappers our stickers of our bikes carry those labels carry those stickers but it's not enough for inanimate things to put on the labels the humans who encounter Jesus must put on Christ I need to close. Romans chapter 13 from verse 1. I mean from verse 11. Romans chapter 13 from verse 11 to verse 14. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. If you are in any form of spiritual slumber, wake up. Let me turn some close and say, wake up, friend. For now our salvation Deliverance from sin, deliverance from eternal damnation, deliverance from eternal guilt and shame. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is fast spent. The night of the absence of revelation, the absence of Jesus. He said the night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Because the day dawn is Jesus. I mean the day star is Jesus. He said therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. Ephesians chapter 5, I think it's verse 18 or so. He calls it the unfruitful works of darkness. Here in Romans 13, he says, Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light and let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry, party life. 
We just want to have fun. This applies more to the youths, the youngsters. Everywhere they go, they want to have fun. Otherwise, they say it's boring. You are boring. This is boring. That is boring. Church is boring. Worship of Jesus is boring because they're not singing those fast songs and jumping and hopping and jumping and screaming. It was boring today. The singing is not for you to impress you. It's about the Lord. He said, so here, let us come out of the revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness or licentiousness and lust, not in strife and envy, but do what? Are, you, are we together here? Verse 14. But do what? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lost. My submission to what I here this morning is there is a call, there is a demand, there is a clear call, there is a divine call. The one who, I mean, Hollywood, Nollywood, Bollywood, they do annual recognition, annual awards, award night. But there is what I call eternal rewards. The things we do in time that are rewarded and rewardable in eternity. That every Christian can come to some platforms of eternal recognition, eternal celebrity, if we put on Christ now for a lifetime. So I challenge us in closing this morning. It's a call we are all called into. It's a demand made out of every one of us. Jesus represented the Father accurately. We are called to represent Jesus accurately and excellently. How? Put on Christ. Let it affect your, let him affect your thoughts. Let him affect your life. Let him affect your lifestyle. Let him affect your relationships. Let him affect you, the way you handle finances. Put on means to put on like a garment. Put on means we no longer see you, the old man, put to the cross. We see Jesus. Christian, we see Jesus. Hallelujah. And we all have help in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is able to help us. That's why the Holy Spirit has been given. To help all people who put on Christ to live up to the demands of that life. The demands of that life naturally impossible to meet. The standards of that life naturally impossible, scholarly impossible, intellectually impossible, socially impossible. You cannot buy your way. Zacchaeus could not buy. Zacchaeus was simply repenting when he said, anyone I've taken from unduly, I return fourfold. He wasn't buying salvation. He was only producing the fruits of a new life and taking up a new life. So whoever you are, make up your mind, friends. He's looking out for us to, that we don't just receive his miracles and receive his power and get demons out of our lives, but that we also become the outshining of God's radiance the manifestation of his son putting on Christ here on earth. Shall we take a bow this morning? In sharing these words, it's a, it's a challenge to every one of us, from the pastor, preacher, to every hearer, live, every hearer, live streaming, to escalate, to step up the demands placed on our lives. As we put on Christ, and in the fulfillment of this new life, there is help in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just to hang around us, to speak in tongues, to show us who our enemy is and how to slay them. It's also to live in the life of Christ and put on the image of Christ and live in the newness of that divine life. Hallelujah. I got my mind made it up. And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday Goodbye world I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. Me stay no longer with you. I made up my mind. 
to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm Ah, born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God. Ah, born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God. I got my money up and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind made up and I won't turn back as I want to see my Jesus. We can't see him if we don't receive him. We can't see him in eternity if we don't live like him in time. Putting on Jesus in time is a dress rehearsal for living for him to eternity. We can't see Jesus for eternity if we don't put on Jesus in time. Everyone in every field put on Jesus. Before I pray for people here this morning, maybe there's someone here saying, man of God, pray for me. I need to turn it over to the Lord. I need this Jesus to come into my life. That I may receive divine, divine capacity to live for him, to put him on. Every time, everywhere, in every space. There's someone here saying, pray for me. I need Jesus in my life. Maybe on live stream. Maybe connected in various locations of the world. We'd like to pray for such people in this moment. Father, we thank you. What a joy. What an eternal encounter for people to turn it all over to Jesus. To say, Jesus, Savior of the world, save me. Jesus, the Lord, be Lord over me. Be the accurate representation of our God in me. Help me, Jesus. I pray for all such people here this morning. Lord, change hearts, change lives, brand these lives with your divine nature. And remove hearts of stone and replace with hearts that yield to Jesus, turn to Jesus, follow Jesus, surrender to Jesus, come under the lordship of Jesus and live to the standards of representing the Lord of the earth. Holy Spirit, walks, walk the works of God in our lives. And make us change. Thank you. The nature of sin is broken. The power of sin is broken. The grip of the whole, old man over our lives and deeds and ways and thoughts. Genetic patterns and family patterns of negativity and limitations and works of the flesh. Those powers broken in this moment. A new heart to follow Jesus. To come under the Lordship of Jesus. To take on Jesus, to put on Jesus, we receive right now. Thank you, Father, because we pray in Jesus' name. I'd like to pray for people also, someone representing whatever you do, whatever your business, whatever your life, whatever your space. You are saying, I need divine capacity, the help of the Holy Spirit, to put on Christ on a daily basis. Not just when I come to church, but much more away from church. In the midst of sinners, in the midst of the gross darkness of the earth, in the midst of perversion and lawlessness, that I may put on Christ indeed. There is someone here saying, pray for me. I need such enabling of the Spirit. I need such help from God on a daily basis for a lifetime. I want to take this role efficiently and excellently, putting on Christ. If you are such a person, stand to your feet this morning. I will pray for you. Divine enabling will come upon your life. The life you now live in the flesh, you will no longer live by your own power or by your degree or by your human ties. You will live by your faith in the Son of God. He said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. If such a person in here this morning saying, 
please pray for me. I need divine enabling, divine power to put on Jesus and live for him every day. Stand to your feet wherever you are. We'll pray for you. And your life will take up divine power, affecting your character, your persona on a daily basis. For the last time, any sort person in this gathering, stand to your feet wherever you are. We'll pray for you. God bless that brother. Don't be ashamed. Don't be intimidated. Don't think of people's opinion, but consider God's opinion about you. You can receive the help of the Holy Spirit today. You can be baptized in the Holy Spirit today. You can receive divine empowerment today to live a life daily that is pleasing in the sight of God. For the last time, any other person joining this chariot, thank God for that brother. Any other person joining this chariot, stand to your feet wherever you are. We will pray for you and divine enabling will come upon your life. Father, thank you for this precious son of yours, precious saint of the most high. I thank you because you are placing upon him and within him divine nature, divine power, divine grace to walk in your counsel, to take up the form of Christ in the marketplace, in the secular environment, in the, in the family setting, in the public setting, wherever he walks, wherever he finds himself. Holy Spirit, carry him on your wings. Beneath, are your everlasting arms. Holy Spirit, walk the works of God in this life that he may be able on a daily basis to put on Christ and represent the fullness of the image of the Son of God. Lord, work it out in this life and let him testify. We thank you, Father, because we are prayed in Jesus' name. And the people shout a believing amen. amen. Hello, brother. Well done. Please see this sister. She has a few things to counsel you with. Shall we put our hands together for him as he goes out to be counseled with? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I would like us to stretch for our hands and pray for our pastor that God will replenish grace, multiply grace exceedingly upon him. A God who causes the one who has water to be watered, will water his life, water his ministry, water his family. Let's pray for God's servants that the anointing of God will be on the increase, the strength of the Almighty will be upon him. The heavens over his life, over his ministry, family will continually be open. He will not lack for the anointing. He will not lack for the wisdom of God. He will not lack for open heavens all the days of his life. Father, we thank you for your servant you have used to minister to us this morning. We receive grace multiplied upon his life and ministry and family. We receive the strength of the Lord upon his life. We receive the blessings of the Almighty upon him. Let Jesus be exalted in his life. Thank you, precious Father, because you have answered. For in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Hallelujah. I would like us to give our offerings as we honor the Lord with it. If you have your offering packaged or you want to give online, the details of the church account is displayed on board on the screen. We encourage as many as possible to give our offerings and our tithes online and if you have it physically here we we'll also be collecting the offering and our tithes to honor the lord please we like the offering bags to go around as we also listen to the following announcements we still hold our discovery service please hello sir can I give my offering, please? All right. We still hold our discovery service every Wednesday. The time is 6 p.m. And it's um, mostly held uh, through live streaming. So you can connect with us via Facebook. You can connect with us via YouTube. Or if you think you want to come around here also, because Pastor preaches from this podium, you can also come around and be blessed but other than that wherever you are whatever part of the world you are you can watch us you can be blessed in that discovery service through our youtube channel through our facebook or through our website www.houseofhispresence.org so please let's get connected 
on Wednesday service. Also, um, our discovery service, our, our uh, Prevella's Place holds every Saturday morning, that's 6.30 a.m. to about 7.30, just one hour. And this is via Zoom. We communicate the login details through the various WhatsApp platforms. So we'd like you to be part of it um, every Saturday morning. Just log in to Zoom. It's a time of intense prayers. And we pray for ourselves, we pray for the church, we pray for our society, we pray for our nation. I believe that that's, that the church of Jesus Christ, the society we live in, needs prayer more than ever, now more than ever. So that, like, like we said on last time, prayer is an investment. You invest into the society, you invest into your future, you invest into your family by prayers. And we cannot pray too much. So we keep praying because Jesus says, pray all the time. So we do not need to stop praying. So look, uh, I would like you to be part of this uh, corporate prayer. Like our pastor said last time, that when we come corporately to pray, the things that are taking us a longer time to achieve, in one moment, because the corporate anointing, the answer has been released, the, the, the blockades are taken away, and we see the answers and the blessings to our prayer. So please, Saturday morning, log in via Zoom, and let's have a refreshing time in God's presence. Hallelujah. Foundational membership classes hold every Sunday after, immediately after service at the communion hall. If you're a new convert, you have not completed the classes, please we encourage you to be part of that so you can know what you stand for and what's the basis of our Christian faith. And finally, the uh, duty pastor for this week is um, Deacon Wale Adelaja. Please get in touch with him for any announcements, testimonies, uh, special songs in due time. Hallelujah. Can we bless the offering? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give out of the abundance of what you have blessed all you have brought this token to bless you and to honor you. Lord, I ask you to receive our offering this morning and our tithes as we see smelling of all, and the blessings of obedience and the blessings of giving be upon your people. And everyone who desired to give and never had and didn't have this money, we ask that, Lord, we bring about supernatural supply to every one of us that we may have to give and that Jesus will be exalted. Thank you, precious Father. For in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome, before we close the service, those people who are watching with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning like this. If you know that you are coming for the very first time to the International House of His Presence in this second service, can we just see you, your hands lifted? Can you lift up your hands? You're a first-timer. We'd like to welcome you. Thank you. Let's celebrate the Lord for that sister. For that sister also. We are glad to have you. We are prayed for you. And we believe that God will touch you. His presence will overwhelm you. His glory will be seen upon you. His blessings will be upon you. And we go with you throughout this week. In Jesus' name. Please do us one more favor. Can we just be on your feet? Can you just be on your feet? You raise your hand, please. I just want to, yeah, just stand up. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. These are, these are glorious people. And we trust God that his glory will envelop your life. This is International House of His Presence. We meet every Sunday morning. We have two services. The first one starts at 8.30 and closes about 9.45. And then the second one starts at 10 and runs up about 11.15. 11, That's our Kingdom Life Service. And then on Wednesday, like I said before, we have a live stream in here. You can hook up via YouTube, via um, Facebook, or via our website and be blessed. Also, on Saturday, we gather together, we converge on the Zoom platform to pray intensively and powerfully, and God's power is released through that corporate prayer. We welcome you to this house. We are big enough to contend you, small enough to know you and to meet your need. And we trust as you have come, the presence of the Lord will abide with you forever in Jesus' name. You may be seated after the service, please. Our enforcement team would like to have a brief chat with you just at that side of the auditorium. God bless you and God increase you in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together as we welcome our pastor to close the service. Praise the Lord.
please, I'd like to make a passionate appeal to us, every one of us. Let us make our time to pray for Nigeria, especially the hot spots in our nation. People are being killed um, recklessly and with very less or uh, with little or no sense of responsibility on the part of government. Uh, there is a lot of religious related killings, extremist killings, forceful takeover of lands in our nation. And we cannot afford to look the other way because we are probably not in those geographical locations. We are, as Christians, we are also watchmen over territories to stand on God's behalf to see that God's will, God's praise is established in our domain. Nigeria is our domain. Please let's pray. Southern Kaduna is going through a lot in recent times. Um, Northeast Borno State is going through a lot um, in recent years. Plateau, Borno State, I mean Benue, and also Plateau states are like killing fields, lands taken over forcefully. And then we cannot just afford to look the other way or hope to be Andrew checking out to another nation. People pay prices for the greatness of nations. We have to pay a measure of prices for the greatness of the Nigerian nation. I passionately appeal to us in our closets. Let's pray for Nigeria. Let's pray against the killings going on. They seem to be strategic and there seems to be a muting of government authorities in this regard and those who speak are questioned a man spoke a very notable man in the society spoke and it was interrogated six hours by the dss and then but we will come to the point that's why issue of face mask nose mask is not the real con contention for your faith the bible says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death so we, if we are afraid to die, we can't really live. So I challenge us, let us take our Christianity, let us put on Christ, and Christ is our intercessor. Romans chapter 8 addresses that from verse 32 to verse 35, is, a, is our intercessor at the right hand of the Father. I'd like to appeal to us, let's pray for our nation. Let's ask God for God's mercy that God's mercy will prevail over judgment that we seem to deserve with the lawlessness, anarchy, and murderous activities across the landscape of our nation. I will trust God that God will do that which seems good in his own sight concerning our nation and bring judgment upon the wicked in Jesus' name. Shall we rise to our feet to close the service? Say to someone close to you and say, put on Jesus. Put on Christ. The Holy Spirit will help you, but it's a responsibility you have received. Don't run away from it. Don't excuse yourself in your thoughts, in your ways, in your deeds, in your relationships. Put on Jesus. It may cost you pain. It may even bring some shame. But remember, it has eternal rewards. And God is watching and reckoning and recording may you have good things to record concerning us in jesus name we'll take the benediction hebrews chapter 13 from verse 20 to verse 21 the benediction shall we want to go now may the god of peace who brought up our lord jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make me complete in every good work to do his will Walking in me, what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the people say, Amen. The Lord bless you, the Lord be gracious to you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, the Lord cause the light of his countenance to be upon you continually. The Lord grant you peace on every side, even in the midst of storms. The Lord grant you peace on every side, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you.